With this video, we are presenting a contained distal thoracic aortic rupture treated with aortic cuff. We used intraoperative image guidance to aid the procedure. 77-year-old male presented with contained rupture of distal thoracic aorta. The patient was hemodynamically stable. A couple of years ago, he underwent EVAR due to juxtarenal aortic aneurysm. Following renal artery coverage, bilateral covered stent implantation was performed. Preoperative imaging also showed the presence of aortobifemoral bypass, presumably performed prior stent graft infl implantation. The stent graft was an ovation device which has a radiopaque corona and limbs. The body itself, however, doesn't show on CTA or fluoroscopy. The proximal seal is achieved via filling the sealing rings with polymer. Preoperative CTA showed contained rupture above the level of the visceral segment. We decided to proceed with aortic cuff placement. We have broken down the procedure to the following 10 key steps. First, we gained bilateral common femoral artery access, then obtained 2D 3D fusion, electronically annotated the important anatomical landmarks and overlaid the annotations to the live fluoroscopic image. Next, we performed an angiogram to evaluate the accuracy of the fusion. Then an aortic cuff was deployed, however the lesion was still showing on the aortogram, so we decided to implant a second aortic cuff, which successfully excluded the aortic lesion. Finally, we closed the bilateral groins. During the case presentation, we are going to refer back to these key steps. First, we gained percutaneous access of the left common femoral artery under ultrasound guidance. Then, the right common femoral artery was exposed from femoral cutdown. From the right femoral access, a stiff wire was passed to the thoracic aorta and the pigtail flush catheter was introduced from the left groin. Image fusion for stand implantation has been shown to decrease radiation burden and contrast consumption. To perform image fusion, two sets of fluoroscopic image were obtained. Then we performed 2D 3D fusion by co-registering the perioperative CTA with the fluoroscopic images obtained intraoperatively. The endograft helped diffusion instead of the bony landmarks. We were able to use the corona of the stangraft to match the fluoroscopic and the CTA images. Next, we electronically annotated the origin of the celiac trunk and the SMA, as well as the proximal and distal borders of the corresponding landing zones. The annotations were overlaid to the live fluoroscopic image. To confirm accurate representation of the celiac artery and the SMA origin, we performed an aortogram which showed the overlay was slightly off, so we adjusted the mask, which now represents the origin of the celiac artery and the SMA. Then we introduced the 30 by 40 mm aortic cuff, positioned it between the marked blue zones and deployed it. As you can see the device moved to the cranial direction, so we performed an aortogram which showed the blab on the aorta was still filling, thus another cuff was required. The second 36 by 40 mm aortic cuff was brought to the operating field and we deployed it in a way that it was overlapping with the previous cuff on the proximal end while appreciating the marked celiac artery. Completion aortogram was no longer able to appreciate the lesion, deeming the procedure successful. After we removed all catheters and wires, the left groin was closed percutaneously while the right groin was closed with a 4-0 monocryl. 
This concludes our video on the image-guided endovascular management of contained aortic rupture. Thank you for watching this video.